Well, good morning and welcome to the Red Door. I'm Profitina and I'm so glad that you could be with us today. Uh, the Red Door. I want to talk with you just a little bit about the Red Door and what that means. Bless the Lord and why the Lord had us call this portion of our network and our streaming the Red Door. Praise God. So I, I like to go over this every time I come on the air and every time I stream this portion of Jericho Way Ministries. And I believe that it is so important to understand when God speaks to you, what he's saying, why he's saying it, and then you just go ahead and do what he's telling you to do. Praise God. And, and that's very important uh, that we follow God. <laughs> he knows, okay? He's appointed us for this specific time and this specific season. And he has a special purpose and a special plan that he wants to carry out throughout the whole world. And we want to make sure that we're doing our part, our very special part, our individual part of what God has called us to do. So we are Jericho Way Ministries, and this is the Red Door uh, Ministry of the Jericho Way Ministries. And I am Prophetina. So why the Red Door? <laughs> the Red Door means welcome. All right, so uh, one moment. Let me just give you some pop on this so that you will see. Bless the Lord. <laughs> welcome. A red door means welcome. And in an old early American tradition, if a family had a front door that was red, tired travelers traveling by horse and buggy would know that that home was a welcome place. Praise God, a welcome place to rest. And so we have our red door here provided for you that God has provided for you, the red door. Why don't you come in and rest a while with us? Okay, rest with us in Jesus' name. There's a rest that is called, uh, that the body of Christ is called to. And that rest is in the power of Jesus Christ and the power of his resurrection the power of his shed blood. Praise God. Hallelujah. There is a rest from your weariness, from your troubles, and from all that, that's going on in your life that, that hasn't exactly come to you the way uh, that you want it to, in the most opportune way. We're going through crises every day in our lives. The enemy is attacking left and right. And God wants you to know that he has provided a rest for you. And that rest, of course, is in his son, Jesus Christ. So not only did that happen with uh, the red door, the red door provides protection. Okay, so in biblical times, the Hebrew slaves were instructed to smear blood, the blood of the lamb on their front doors to protect their firstborn from the angel of death. Wow. <laughs> The red door, hallelujah, the, the door flowing with the blood of the lamb that they had killed and had eaten uh, the night before, before daybreak. But they were to put that blood on their door, on their doors and on their lentils. And the red blood of the lamb kept the angel of death away. Mm, wow, how powerful, you know, that is. How powerful and anointed that grace that God has given us. And so what we see in the story of the Hebrews being delivered from Egypt, and before they were actually delivered, God sent another plague on the Egyptians, which was spoken out of the Pharaoh's mouth. And that plague was, you know, to kill the firstborn. Oh, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Have mercy on us, Lord. Oh, have mercy on us and have mercy on us because as Moses, the leader, instructed the people on what God had said, what if Moses had not wanted to do what God had said? You know, it sounds kind of silly, you know, eating, a, you know, killing a lamb and then putting his, his blood on the door. This is our house. We don't want blood on the door, you know, and on the lentils and on the lamppost, blood everywhere. All right. In the front of that house. Okay, so uh, when that angel of death came, 
Mm -hmm. It smote everything that was firstborn, except those who were in the house who had the red blood dripping from the door. <laughs> Praise God. And so the red door provides protection to you. You see, Jesus is the door. All right. And he opens, he knocks on uh, the door and, and you open your heart to him. Open your heart to Jesus in obedience today. That's how important obedience is. No matter how silly something sounds, you know, no matter how, you know, stupid it may look to you, if God gives you an instruction, whatever instruction God gives you, you do it because it actually is for your life, for sustaining your life. And so we're about obeying God, listening to him and doing whatever he says. That's what the red door is about as well. Oh, be careful how you entertain strangers, the word of God tells us, because you can be entertaining angels unaware. So the red door we know means welcome and it means protection, but also too, back in the day, the churches painted their doors, okay? They painted the doors of the church red to represent the blood of Jesus, amen the blood of Jesus. They painted the doors of the church red. So passing through the door would mean that you are on holy ground. That's what the red door means. Passing through that door, you're on holy ground. And some believe a red door protects the occupants from evil. Jesus says, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the Lord, life. And he's the door. And the door that he opens for you, no man can shut. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Thank God for doors. Thank God for open doors that he has presented to us for our peace and for our joy, for our sustenance. He's presented these doors to us for us to open. And every time we open the door, praise God that Christ has, has, has presented to us a door of welcome, a door of peace a door of joy. We open those doors and that's exactly what we find in that door and through that door. Mm, praise God. And so we thank God for the red door, don't we? We thank God for the blood of Jesus. But another thing that I'm thanking God for is the ability to be obedient to his word. Praise God, whatever he tells us to do, that's the important thing to do, right? Mm, praise God. That's the most important thing to do is to obey God. Bless the Lord. And so we have Apostle Jonathan with us today and Doris, praise God. Thank you guys for joining in today. I think this is going to be a dynamic stream today, a dynamic uh, pod, uh, pod, what do you call them? <laughs> so because of the word, God just threw this word at me. And, and as I was sharing with Doris earlier, Jeremiah and I were having a conversation and we weren't talking about anything like this. I don't even know what the conversation was about, but it wasn't about this, okay? And so all of a sudden I heard the word milieu uh, come out of his mouth. He did not say it. And I'm Jeremiah, did you just say milieu? Because I know the word, it's an old word. I mean, you know, you just don't go around saying milieu in everyday common, you know, conversation. But, you know, back in the day when you're being educated and they give you all those words for your SAT test, you know, and you study all these words. Milieu was one of those words that I really liked, a French word. <laughs> and what it means, you know, is, and oh, by the way, when Jeremiah said that, I, he didn't say it. I heard his voice say it, but he didn't actually say it. It was the Holy Spirit saying it and bringing it to me in this way that this is something that we need to take a look at. This is something that we need to study milieu and how it affects us milieu all right is you pronounce it m-e-e-l meal and y-o-u you okay and what a milieu is bless the lord a milieu or milieu is a person's social environment the physical and social surroundings of a person or group of persons and so we're going to dwell into what God is saying to us behind this word, the meaning of this word, mill you, mill you. Okay, your total surroundings, your total habitat. And, and so what are you doing in your habitat? 
all right, in your habitat, the habitat that God has given you. Are you making it the habitat of God? Okay. What is your environment? Praise God. And so we know that we have an environment of heaven, don't we? The word of God tells us, and we pray every day the Lord's prayer, thy will be done in earth and on earth as it is in heaven. So we look at that phrase, as it is in heaven. What's going on in heaven that we can have an as is, okay? What can we take from heaven, the heavenly environment, the heavenly habitat, the heavenly place, okay? And incorporate that heavenly place into where we are, okay? Heaven on earth, praise God. And so we're gonna be talking about how bad company can corrupt good morals. Okay, and we're gonna have Apostle Jonathan at this time. He's gonna give us some, uh, some scriptures today uh, to guide us and lead us in this as an undergirding for what God wants to tell you about milieu, your milieu, <laughs> you milieu. <laughs> Apostle Jonathan, praise God. Thanks for being with us this morning. Praise God. Praise God. This is a, a word that I don't use every day, that's for sure. <laughs> Praise God. But, uh, you know, I was thinking about that bad company corrupts good morals. So who are we hanging out with? What, what Who are the people that make a difference? Uh, Psalm 1, what does that say? Mm -hmm. uh, they, uh, mm, you know, that we're not to hang out with the people that uh, are corrupt and, and thinking different things. Right. Do, do you remember how the first verse is in Psalm 1? Psalm 1? Okay, Blessed let's is get the man it. that walketh not I'll, in I'll the get it for you. Wait, wait, I got it. Blessed got is it. the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but instead his delight is in the law of the Lord. Amen. Right? Amen. So amen, the amen. scornful, the, you know, the people that are, are, trying, are mocking God, you know, that's not the people we should be hanging out with. Uh, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. we end up with a theology based on the world's thinking, which John Wimber called barroom theology. <laughs> you know, the people, everybody thinks they're good until they're measured up with the with the Ten law of God. <laughs> the Ten you know, Commandments. Have you ever lied? Have you ever stolen? Have you ever skipped the, the Sabbath day? Have you ever looked upon a woman with lust in your heart? You know, these kinds of things, and all of a sudden, we don't look so perfect because God's measurement is perfect. Okay, but how can we create an environment? Uh, I believe it's your question. How, how can we create an environment that, that's, uh, w that will bring us closer to God, that will keep us on the right path? Yeah. Praise mm -hmm. God. <laughs> I think of the uh, scriptures where it talks about Moses and his creating of the temple um, that tent, if you will, and how it had to be laid out perfectly according to the plan of God. As, Amen. And it was a reflection of what was going on in heaven. Amen. And Amen. when it came to Aaron's clothes and his robe and his garment and that priestly, uh, uh, all the stones that were on there, one for each tribe, you know, it had to be done right. And then the Bible said it was done for beauty and for glory. For glory. Woo! Uh, yeah, and by the Amen. way, thing, that it looks kind of royal what you're wearing today. And, and <laughs> really? praise God. I know people watch sometimes just to look and see what you're wearing, <laughs> what your hair looks like today, because we never quite know <laughs> from like week to week. Joseph coat of many colors. Praise yeah. God. I would imagine when I saw this and I bought it, I, I, I imagine that this must have been something similar to what G, uh, what uh, what Joseph of coat his coat look like and you see the colors as a captain and the colors are just beautiful praise god and the other person so you know and then I we think of the, the psalms 31 woman how she prepared her she prepared the food she had clothing for the entire not just the family but i, I believe she had workers there as well yes uh, you know and you know pre preparation every animal uh, knows that they have to store up food for the winter you know, and so that they have it. So there's a preparation that goes on as well. Even the marriage supper of the lamb, it talks about that everything's ready. Praise God. And the wise Amen. already, person. but already, but prepared in a specific way, not just slapping food, you know, on a serving tray, 
you know, no, and putting it any old kind of way. And Jonathan, you've had experience with five star, uh, five star hotels and in and, and their preparation, the preparation of excellence. All right. And everything in the surroundings. OK, everything was done to the utmost excellent. No dust. No. I mean, everything was prepared for beauty. But when your eyes feasted upon it, you probably wouldn't even, it was so beautiful, you probably wouldn't even want to eat it. It was so beautifully prepared. No, I never had that problem. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, in a five-star mm -hmm. resort, pr presentation is, is half the battle. Presentation. Yeah. And, and like you say, I saw the chef in, in, uh, behind the scenes one time, he, well, one of the uh, assistant chefs, and, and he was taking in this case it was chicken and and you know how easy it is to to pull off the skin and yet there's still some white stuff left around the meat and he mm -hmm. was trimming that off very carefully so that when he gave you the food it was uh, mm. you know just the good parts mm -hmm. I, I i once uh, my father knew this uh, millionaire uh, attorney here in phoenix before we even moved out here and he, they went to dinner one time and the man ordered a nice steak and different things. And, and he was always in great shape. And one of the things my father noticed was that he ate the heart out of the meat before anything else. And he wouldn't necessarily finish it, but he was, he was going to have the best part. You know, so even the way he ate, it was going to be the best. Yes. Praise God. And, and, you know, I think of different things like that. What, what are we choosing? Uh, I had an, uh, another friend. Uh, that we called uh, the soft spoken word, you know, mm -hmm. and he was saying, who's going to, you know, are all these girls going to tempt me? He says, why am I going to be tempted with that mutton when I've got filet mignon at home? You know, <laughs> <laughs> praise God. You know, so who are we going to surround ourselves with? Are we going to be satisfied with the, with nothing? And some of us get beat up in life, you know, and we think that, that you know, and we've had to scrap, we've had to, uh, get whatever we could. Uh, but do you know what amazes me is the people in the third world countries and uh, the, the man of God will go there and one of the traditions in that country is that they serve the man of God a meal and they will give their finest to him, whatever that may be. It may be something quite simple by our standards, but they, they put their thought and their heart and they prepared it with love and basically it was like here you eat we'll all stand here and watch you you know <laughs> but uh the but the point is that they prepared the best and mm -hmm. they wanted him to experience the best they had and like i say it's not the best that there is but the best they had exactly. they could offer, you exactly. know and that that's the key you know when people come to our home and i'm i'm proud of you Prophetina, because uh they come here and we don't just, you know, dust and vacuum and, and uh, that kind of, and prepare food. But when people come here, we want the environment. Uh, mm -hmm. Not, uh, you know, yes, we want it clean. Yes, we want to have lots of food uh, for everybody's taste. And, and you do such a wonderful job of having a lot of variety. Uh, you know, and sometimes there's people with uh, special uh, diets. And so, you know, we'll have all this meat, and yet we have friends that are vegetarian. So we'll make sure that there's plenty of vegetables and salads and fruit and that kind of thing as well. So we're thinking about everybody, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the best testimony that we get uh, is that people don't want to leave once they come. <laughs> That's so you know, true, Apostle Jonathan. It happens all the time true. for us. Praise yeah. God. And, and the best we had was one time where we had a, a gathering, and I don't even remember what the gathering was for. I, I don't believe it was terribly spiritual, but uh, the people that were here were, were men and women of God, and they all came away from the kitchen in the family room. They came over here to the living room and uh, on the way out. And one of the sisters began to to pray a, a final blessing out the door. And, <laughs> and I mean the Everybody Holy Ghost fell <laughs> right here in the living room. Uh, and we had a Holy Ghost party. Uh, it, it was, you know, five, ten, twenty, thirty minutes. We couldn't stop because the Holy Ghost fell. Uh, praise God! So a nice little dinner turned into a Holy Ghost party. <laughs> I had one friend. 
we'll and never you're talking forget. about sweetheart you're talking about uh the environment that we create in our home the environment of love the environment of peace the environment of acceptance all right yeah. the welcome okay the welcoming you're welcome here and when people come to our home they know that now we don't live in like a, a 20 room mansion it certainly isn't a million dollar home but for where you are and where we are and what we have uh, the God has blessed us with the grace, with graciousness, and and we we've, we've prayed for that kind of milieu, for that kind of surrounding, uh, for our place to be a place of refuge. Yeah, remember when our friend was over, and uh, <laughs> we had a, a great time talking about the Lord, my buddy Mark, and uh, he he knew that he had responsibilities for the day. But uh, the Holy Spirit wasn't quite finished with him yet. <laughs> <laughs> and you tried to get he out walked, the door too, right? He, he literally opened the door to go there was out. An angel there. Of course, we were gracious and said goodbye. <laughs> but the Holy Ghost <laughs> fell on him, and he got knocked out right in the doorway. <laughs> right back into the house. And, woo, you know what I mean? He was laughing in the spirit and shaking, and, and the Holy Ghost was just flailing and kicking. <laughs> And oh, praising that was God. And praising God. Oh, so we're talking about environment today, you know, and how important environment is. Bless God. Hallelujah. And so today, you know, in our in our time together, we know that bad company corrupts good morals. Now remember, but to to to, to go off on on this, stay on this this stream that we've been in. Moses' temple, okay. God gave him specific instructions on how, you know, to build that temple. And he followed them to the letter. And it must be built according to God's instructions, you know, according to God's parameters. You know, God knows the place where he wants to dwell and he dwells in heaven. Why, is the, why, does, why would he want to come down, you know, from heaven and dwell in a raggedy temple? <laughs> a temple that's just kind of thrown together. You know, oh, let's put this over here, that over there is not clean and you know, oh, he said to put this here, but I'm changing my mind. I I, I'm going to do something else, you know, other than what God said. You know, God is talking to us all the time, giving us instructions all the time, promoting himself in us all the time, promoting the glory all the time, com promoting the beauty, okay, of his presence in us all the time. And then we're gonna just going to slap it down and slap any old thing together. Uh, when you're serving people food, slap any old thing on their plate and, and fix it any old kind of way. No, no. What is your milieu, you know, in this scenario, in this situation? We can even talk about Solomon's temple. Come on, y'all. Gold everywhere. Uh, marble floors, glistening clean. Even the servants back in the day for the American slaves, you know, they wouldn't give them shoes. They wouldn't give us clothes, you know, and barely fed us. Come on, Solomon's temple. Uh, they, they marveled. The people marveled and came. Even the queen of Sheba came and said, oh, my God, even your servants, you know, are dressed well with gold. And, you know, it's just amazing. What environment are you establishing, you know, for God to dwell in? according to, you know, your ability, to the utmost of your ability. What is your milieu when it comes to your priestly garments? <laughs> Praise God. Can you think the glory and the grace of God can be in flip-flops and uh, cut-off jeans <laughs> and holy jeans? <laughs> Praise God. Or are you a robe kind of minister where you like to wear the robes and you like to show off the glory and the the honor you honor God with your robes, okay, with the the way that you look and your style, okay. We can't get in, we cannot not get into clothing and attire because clothing and attire was a, important to God for His ministers and the the priest robes had to be they were specified by God as to how they are to be made, the fabric to be used, the stitching, that even down to the color of the thread to be used, oh hallelujah. And they were to be made for glory. They were, be to, were to be made in excellence, but they were to be made to show off the glory of God. Oh <laughs> hallelujah. 
Are you showing off the glory of God with your environment, with your presence? And, and, and does the world know from the presence that you present that you love God? The priestly garments even had to be made a special way, okay? Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So how do you think the angels look up in heaven? You think they got dirty robes on? Mm. <laughs> you know, I don't know. They might be wearing sandals, but uh, Jonathan loves sandals. Um, because all the pictures you see of angels, they have sandals on. Well, Jesus wore sandals, so they might be wearing sandals. But do you think their feet are dirty? Mm -mm -mm. No. Do you think they present before God the way that he created them to the very best okay, of, of who they are and the excellence that he created them in to operate in their worship of God in the utmost. He's able to save us to the utmost. So with our utmost, we are to give him glory and honor, not just on our person, but in our person, but as well in our surroundings. And that's what we're talking about today, your surroundings. And that's what we're getting to, your milieu. All right. And so even we had to enter, he tells us in the scriptures to enter his courts with thanksgiving, all right? Enter his courts with thanksgiving and with praise. There's even a way that we approach him. There's a way to approach God. He tells us to come boldly before the throne of grace. And yes, okay, but I'm sorry for me, I'm just not gonna come boldly any old kind of way. I'm still honoring him. I'm still respecting him. I'm still giving him glory. And when I come before him, I'm coming before him with my whole life, my whole life that I have presented to him. Everything in me and on me has been presented to him for his glory. All right. For his glory. And so when I stand before his throne in boldness, I don't come up there shame. You know, I don't come before the Lord in condemnation. I don't come before him in anything, in any way that's bringing condemnation or shame. On, on his presence, even though he's told us to come boldly. He didn't tell us to come raggedy, all right? He didn't tell us to come, you know, with a lack of excellence. He told us to come boldly, but as we are coming boldly, we're coming boldly in the excellence of who he created us to be, in the glory of who he created us to be. Nothing lacking, no attitudes or just throwing God any old kind of thing and giving him any old kind of worship and, you know, praying any old kind of way to God. There's a holiness and that preparation of holiness in the way we approach God, all right? And so uh, today we're talking milieu because God wants you to hear this, all right? He wants you to know that even though now we've been kind of lax, we've been kind of hippie-ish <laughs> concerning our approach to him, you know? But now God is saying, you're ready now to understand you know, the, the deeper things of God. I want to broaden you, you know, at this point, and you're ready for it now. As you've let go of the past, you've let go of all that other stuff, God is saying now, let's provide a place, okay, in you and around you now, as it is in heaven, that reflects my glory and my excellence for beauty and for glory. Man, you look like you got something to say there. <laughs> yeah, I just want to put some things in perspective. Some of the young people uh, didn't walk through the the generations that we have. And when there was a movie that just came out about the Jesus Revolution, and I believe you saw that already. Yeah. Uh, I lived it. You know, I haven't seen the movie yet, but uh, I lived it. And, you were there. <laughs> yeah. One of the things that you see is that uh, the difficulty that uh, Chuck Smith had in receiving the hippies. And the, the church members were even uh, like, I, I don't want my, my carpet to get dirty, you know? <laughs> From their feet. Yeah. And but you walk on the carpet every day with your shoes. Don't you think dirt is going to be on the shoes? It's like, yeah. that was so weird. <laughs> but, you know, and with his children around, you know, they had a, a small church, nothing significant. And uh, he said, bring home some hippies. You know, and uh, it was a way our, our churches back in those days were so formal that uh, it was hard to even uh, allow uh, people to come as they are, you know. And so this was a whole sweeping change of allowing people to come as you are to Jesus. He'll clean you up afterwards. He'll, he'll straighten up your life uh, and you'll be able to have some different clothes uh, eventually, but come as you are. Uh, and I remember yeah. 
uh, in college, I went to a, a concert and we all wore our blue jeans and our blue jeans jackets. And those guys could sing and they could worship and they could give glory to God like I hadn't heard before. And it was such a joy to come in and experience God in my blue jeans, you know, uh, because we didn't really wear, when I went to high school, we didn't wear jeans. That wasn't no, so- it was against cool. the rules. In fact, if you wore jeans to high school, you were you would be thrown out. There was no way. You Jimmy Dean, that Jim Dean, what's that James Dean? Yeah. Uh, that rebel, he had on jeans and a white t-shirt. That was horrific back in the 50s when he did that. You know, when he wore that outfit, that was his signature outfit. But we couldn't, couldn't even, girls couldn't even wear pants to school. So, but right. jeans were out, out, just totally out. That was not the environment, okay? That was not the, the milieu or the habitat, you know, or the way, the place. The school didn't want that, 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 um, that attitude of the rebel you know, the rebel rebellious attitude of the boys wearing jeans to school. Those were for fun. Well, my, my point is that you come as you are, but you don't stay as you are. Amen. <laughs> you I know, like the that. Lord wants to wants you to come however you are. And, you know, you, you don't come flaunting. Uh, you know, there used to be issues with, with girls, you know, coming with their boobs hanging out and all kinds of stuff on a regular basis. And, and, uh, you know, if that's all you have, you come, get saved, and the Lord will clean you up, give you different clothes, okay? But, and so we don't stay there, right? And I've seen over the, over the decades where uh, now people come, uh, they don't even think about their dress at all. They come in flip-flops and, and shorts uh, out here in Arizona because uh, they're on their way to the beach afterwards or, you know, up to the lake or out to the mountains or have their party. And so it's a, an hour and out uh, where they're just coming. But but uh, I believe the Lord wants us to make our holy day, our Shabbat, uh, a day of reverence and, and to give him honor in the way we come and with our hearts, with our minds, and even with our clothing. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And I just want to share this with you, uh, a milieu. A mil your milieu is your surrounding, okay? It's your surrounding culture, your family, your house, your neighborhood, your school, and the people you hang out with. They are, that all that makes up your milieu. For example, if you live in a mansion and have rich friends, you're part of the upper crust milieu. Uh, a milieu is both surroundings and everything that makes up the everything that makes up your surroundings is your milieu. And that's what God wants us to get into today. Everything that makes up your surroundings. OK, your milieu is your world or the context you come from. Sometimes milieu shapes a person as when a milieu of ab abuse and poverty inspires someone to improve things for others. Milieu sounds like a lot of mil like mildew <laughs> without the D. But unless you grow up in a moldy bathtub, mildew probably has little to do with milieu, with your milieu. All right. And so your environmental condition, what are you doing in your environment? Who are you hanging out with? What is around you? All right. What are you placing in your your, you know, in your surroundings. And I just want to share some things with you here. One moment. So here we go. One moment. Milieu is environment, surroundings, space, place, your background, your backdrop, position, your habitat, it's your territory. It's your assignment from God. It is heaven on earth in your space, okay, in your place. It's the glory of God uh, resounding where you are. And how are you promoting that now that you have become a carrier of the glory of God? Hallelujah. Can you honestly say that you are a carrier of the glory of God when your milieu stinks, okay, when your milieu doesn't reflect it? Okay, when when you're 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 being out there doing good, but your milieu is speaking bad against you. Okay, and 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 then we get to the third section that we want to talk about: how your milieu will either promote God or the devil. 
Okay, well, maybe there are some things in your milieu, your surroundings, in your habitat that that reflects the devil and it doesn't reflect God. It doesn't reflect the, the holiness of God. All right, so what do you need to put in your milieu? What do you need to take out of your milieu? But first you wanna examine what your true milieu is, what your true surroundings are, what your true habitat is. Is it to be like Solomon's temple, like Moses' like the Moses temple that Moses had God build? Praise God. You know, is your house to look like that? <laughs> certainly, you may not be able to look like Solomon's temple, but certainly it can look like God, okay, on the level that God has given you. And uh, so let me just, just go over some of the notes that God has given me on this, okay? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Milieu. Probably not a word that you've heard before, but certainly a word that God is bringing forth to us in this day and in this time. Praise God. You have to forgive me for my, for my, uh, for my, my, the word choice. I mean, God gave it to me, but you have to understand where I was educated. This was like everyday kind of talk. This is, this is, <laughs> this is the level of the education that I got that these kind of words were thrown around in everyday kind of conversation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, your background, let me just, share some things here with you. One moment. Prophet Tina, yes, while, dear. You, while you're getting that one out, mm -hmm. I, wanna, I was thinking about another scripture that talked about David's mighty men. Mm -hmm. uh, he had certain ones that were, were heroes and, and uh, one, I believe the word in the, in the scripture is Gibberim and or Giborim. And they were the ones that were powerful soldiers. Uh, they talked about him. The uh, these be the names of the mighty men whom David had, the Tachmanite that sat in the seat, chief among the captains. The same was Adino the Asnite. He lifted up his spear against eight hundred whom he slew at one time. Can you imagine wow. eight hundred? <laughs> I mean, that is a battle and a half. Eight hundred. And then they go down and the lesser ones, you know, one found a, a, a place of uh, something of value. I believe there was some special uh, crops there. And instead of running away or anything, he stood his ground there and made sure that that wasn't ruined in the middle of the battle. You know, Amen. So, and then he goes on and he talks about some of the others. And uh, there was a, a ground full of lentils. And so it, there were these guys in a list, some, you know, a couple of the highlights of their uh, abilities, praise God. And, and so you can be men or women of honor in whatever sphere you live in, praise God. There, there are people that I, I love hearing about these guys that, that didn't have a family and, uh, but they wanted to be, they, they were in these neighborhoods that were troubled where there weren't very many men, uh, fathers around. So he made sure that he was gonna be the father of the neighborhood. And oh, he would take God. one young awesome. guy and another one and another one and make sure they had something to do and make sure they had some fun and make sure they had somebody to talk to. And he just became the dad of the neighborhood. Hallelujah. And, and uh, what, what, a, <laughs> what a reputation to have, right? Um, Amen. You know, and you, so there's lots of different kinds of milieu. I know the ladies love to make a great environment. Some of you are are great at at uh, decoration and uh, make things beautiful. How do and I I love it uh, when when uh, uh, people ladies that are, are and to get it's not just ladies but but people when they when they're getting married they they talk about. I want to create an environment in our home that is loving, that is warm, that is accepting. And those are the kinds of, that's the kind of milieu that I think is valuable, right? The, the kind that is going to create an atmosphere in their home of love and of care. And one of the things Prophet Tina and I had to do, uh, you know, we come from different cultures and, and uh Things are, are you know, in my background are different than hers. And, and we gave each other a, quite a grace at the beginning, uh, especially, you know, understand you can't say those things in this culture. <laughs> you know, <laughs> understand this is how things work where I come from. 
uh, and uh, you know, but but giving each other a break and giving each other explanation uh, rather than judgment, uh, you know. So that acceptance was there, and that understanding, and uh, then explanation, and the heart had to come through, of course. But what a blessing! Okay, Prophet Tina, take it away. Praise God. Are you creating a place for God to dwell? Okay, that's the question here today. Are you creating a glory milieu? So we, Jonathan talked about culture. I'm so glad that he talked about culture because your culture is a part of your whole milieu. And how much is your culture affecting your surroundings? Okay, so today I just want to give you some, some pointers here. And we're going to talk about and pray about after we give all of this out on how uh, to create um, a glory milieu for God, all right, for God to dwell in, for him to be comfortable in your space and in your habitat, in the territory that he's assigned to you. Praise God. Um, so as a believer in, 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 in God, you know, one of the things that we do, you know, is we, uh, we of course, we worship him, we read the scriptures, uh, but are you doing anything to counteract all the, the glory and power that God has given you through reading the scriptures? All right. And so are you are you also reading and watching and listening to demonic music and books? OK, uh, what are you drawing to yourself by what you wear? OK, uh, the tattoos that you have. Environment is more important than you think. It was is way more important than you think, because in your environment, God is saying you're either going to draw me or you're going to draw the devil. And we're talking on a spiritual level here now. All right. And so who do you want to draw? Who do you want to have in your surroundings? What what is the glory, anointing and grace uh, that you want in your place? OK, in your place of dwelling, where you sleep, where you come to rest, you know, where you come to rest, where you come, you know, to replenish yourself. What do you want to draw to that surrounding? OK, what are you supporting in your space that's contrary to the word of God. Do you have anything around you or in you that it, it, it's just, it doesn't give the glory to God? Anything on your walls, anything in your room, anything in your wallet, anything anywhere. We're talking your entire habitat, your milieu is everything about you in the space that has that you're in. Everything is your milieu. And God wants to grab hold to your milieu. He wants to be in every portion of your surroundings, every portion of your environment, every, every space that you have, every place that you have, backdrop and position, your habitat, your territory. God is assigning himself to that place. All right. <clears throat> in the same way that the scripture tells you that you're the temple of the Holy Spirit, you're where God dwells. And if you're where God dwells, he has designed and specifically put <clears throat> dimensions and the way worship is to, to happen, uh, specifically designed schematics, you know, on the place where he dwells. It, it must be done a certain way for, to, for it to contain his glory in the way that he wants his glory to be contained. contained. And you have items, you have mindsets, you have things that you're doing that is allowing the glory of God to pour out of you, like a, it's just pouring out of you, because these things are drawing away, drawing you away from the glory of God, the, the manifestation of his full presence in your habitat, okay, <clears throat> where you live, where you work, where you play, where you go to the gym. Everything is your milieu. And God wants to take hold of that milieu, not to rob you or to steal anything from you, but to make sure that in your environment and in your habitat, wherever you are, that he has a place there, that you have not left him out in any way. Moses didn't, Solomon didn't, and of course, Jesus didn't either. He says, I say what I hear the father say, and I do what I see him do. And so now in preparing a place to, for God to inhabit, to, in preparing a place for God to live in, for him to thrive in, for him to be, be his holy self in, like it is in heaven, your surroundings now, okay? We are kingdom. We call ourselves the kingdom kids all the time. You know, we're kings and queens and God has translated us from the kingdom of darkness 
and translated and put us into the kingdom of his dear son. Hallelujah. It is heaven on earth and we are to reflect heaven on earth in our surroundings and what we do, what we say, how we do it is important as well to the attitude of excellence. God is an excellent God. His name is an excellent name and how we do things are extremely important as well. So what are you watching? What are you looking at? Are you guarding your ear gates mm, and your eye gates? Okay, that's your milieu. Okay, and God now, because you've grown up and you've matured uh, to this place, who ha 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 God now wants to introduce you to total godly milieu, totally surrounded in God everywhere you go and in everything you do to extract that from your surroundings that is not godly. Okay. And I, I just got, you know, ooh, wow, I just got something. The Holy Spirit just dropped something in my spirit. Praise God. So husbands and wives watching pornography together. All right. <clears throat> and even though you're doing it together, and the scripture says that when you're married, the marriage bed is not who shahikuhanamasata is not defiled. But God wants me to tell you this that the pornography that you're watching together as a couple and you're a Christian couple, okay, a believer in God, is not the milieu that has been assigned to you by God, because you are not going to see pornography in heaven. Okay, it doesn't reside there because it's sin. All right, you're watching people who are not married to each other necessarily doing despicable and all kinds of disgusting sexual acts. All right, that were, that is not God's plan. And so when you do this, you're creating a, a, an environment and a surrounding for the devil. It is not God's milieu. Okay, even though you're doing it together. And so the Lord is saying, repent of this action, repent of it immediately. Because of the attacks of the enemy that are coming in this season, God is preparing you and fortifying you against the attacks of the enemy. And any door that's open, that's not a red door, <laughs> that's not a Jesus door, that's not a God door, the enemy is coming in and he's coming in full blast. He's not going to, he's coming in blasting. You hear what I'm saying? He's bringing everything he's got and he's looking for openings okay, in you and on you and everywhere in your environment to take advantage of you. And this is why God is putting this word out there today for you to hear that now you must, you must represent him in every phase of your life and everywhere that you are. He must be able to reside there in power and in glory. And if you're entering into licentiousness um, and um, the kinds of stuff that goes on in uh, pornography, all right, and you're doing it even as a couple. The Lord said it's a lie. The enemy has perpetrated a lie uh, that it's okay for you to do that. Mm -mm, it's not okay. And God is saying that if it, if it can't be done in heaven, <laughs> if it's a sin in heaven, it's a sin on earth as well. God is calling out his will to be done in earth as it is in heaven. Praise God. And so we're going to ask you to repent, you know, of that sin, because it is sin, even though you're doing it together as a couple, it is still sin. It's the sin is on both of you. And you've introduced these demonic forces into your household, into your presence, into your milieu. And God is saying he, he can't look at it. He can't smile on it. He's not sanctioning it. It is not of me, he said. It's not. And so let it go. And then let God come in and give you healthy ways, spiritual ways, powerfully heavenly ways to express your love for each other in the holy righteous name of Jesus. Mm. What are you allowing in your habitat? Okay, what are you allowing? The place where you live. Are you providing a safe place for God's presence? Woo, whoa, hallelujah. Mm. Oh, glory to God. There are articles different things, even as small as a pen, a penny. Uh, people are cursing people with these things, innocuous things, putting them in your presence. God revealed some of that to me at one point, even a needle uh, had a curse on it and, and brought a church down and killed the pastor. The pastor was dead, you know, as a result of that curse. He shot na kata basota. Mm, praise God. So what are do you have in your environment uh, that's not of God? Do you have books? 
clothing with demonic symbols on them? Uh, you know, and do you have statues and different items around you in your environment that that clearly are not of God? All right. And some things are clearly that they're not of God, but other things are not. OK, peace signs. And uh, you can look up online You can and, and, and even go to to YouTube and they have different people who have taught on the different um, things that you can have in your environment that are not of God, okay? Trinkets, trinkets that you picked up, things that you bought, you know, at at um, at those, um, you know, at those uh, swap meets and things like that. Have curses on them and uh, different articles, and these things draw not the presence of God, okay? They draw the presence of the enemy. Ravatina, right? yes, you're, dear, you're so right. Uh, we've had people that have. Uh, done deliverance in uh, in homes, and uh, there were books that were found that uh, attracted the demonic. Mm -hmm. We've had people that uh, out here we have Kachina dolls mm -hmm. in Arizona, and those are basically idols. Totems are, are basically idols. Uh, different different what artifacts. Are those sleep things, those things that make you go to sleep. What are those things called? That round thing that they hang up. I forgot the name of it. Dream catchers. Yeah, dream catchers. Yeah. yeah and <laughs> they're so popular now. And, and some people you know, like those kachinas can be very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. But I know I know people that got those out of their house uh, and where there was uh, uh, turmoil, turmoil, constant mm -hmm. turmoil in the home. Uh, it, we're, now there's there's peace. And they realize that God's way are the best ways. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. They and, uh, drawing demons. That's what we're doing. They are do. You creating an environment for to draw angels in the presence of God, or you got stuff in your environment that's drawing demons. I I had a friend that gave me a testimony. He grew up in Hawaii, and his dad was in World War II, and he brought home some some beautiful artifacts from from Vietnam, and and. Uh, some of them were were gods, and uh, mm. he had he had gotten born again, and didn't even you know he was young and impetuous, but he didn't even tell his parents. But he went out and broke those, and there was there was so much less turmoil in the home that he finally confessed to his parents what what was going on, and they yeah things have changed. I guess I'm glad you did that, but <laughs> don't do that again, you know. But uh, it made a difference getting rid of that stuff and okay. it'll make a difference in your home too. Well, the spring cleaning time and all the people who do house cleaning and yard work and all that stuff, they're getting all their business cards out, walking around the neighborhood, uh, letting people know, Hey, we're available. And God wants you to know that it's spring cleaning time. <laughs> all right. It's time to clean out your environment. It's time to clean it up out of the things that would, would not allow his presence to be wholly uh, present with you in that environment. Okay. So even the decorations that you can bring in, in your home, praise God. Even the decorations that you can bring in your home, uh, things that you can put on the wall uh, that bespeak God's glory. <clears throat> and remember how Solomon, I mean, how Moses was to make the ark of the, or who was it that, that uh, not Moses, but I think it was Joshua. They made that ark of the covenant. It was very specific instructions on how to make it. All right. I, you know, forgive me because the, the, the historical part of it, Moses or Joshua. Um, anyway, the ark, when the ark was created, God gave very specific instructions on how to carry his glory how to carry the Ten Commandments, Moses' rod, okay? And there was something else in there too, all right? And it was the power of God manifested in this ark, but it, the ark had to be created by very specific instructions to promote the glory of God and the power of God. And that thing was that it, absolutely powerful, you know? And so here you are now, you, you are the ark of God. You are carrying the glory of God now. And you've been made in a very specific and special way. But don't add anything to this creation that God has given you that's going to deflect, you know, his glory, that's going to reject his glory and not have that power uh, flow through you that, that, that he um, wants to flow through. And please don't get this twisted. Okay, this is not, it sounds like it's a simple thing. 
All right. It sounds like it's not a big deal. Oh, my gosh. You know, the stuff that I have in my house, the stuff, clothes that I wear, the way that I act and talk. You don't think it's important. OK. And you may not think it's important, but God is saying it's crucial in this season. It's crucial in this season that you get this at this this right. And this is why he supernaturally made me hear the word milieu and then have me study on milieu and what that means to the body of Christ and to believers. Okay, God, God wants, you know, in the natural, all right, in the natural as well in the, as the spiritual to, to have his place of dwelling to be reflected. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. And so are you, do you have anything in you, in your heart and mind that's deflecting God's glory and not reflecting it? Do you have anything on the inside of you that is not promoting God's glory, but promoting the glory or the, you know, the enemy. Okay. And so God is ascending and anointing with this word today, praise God, so that you will be able to have, you know, when you enter into the courts of God, hallelujah, that your total milieu, which is you, Okay, your total surroundings, your milieu is you, your milieu is you, because what you have in your milieu is going to be a reflection of you, but also too is going to affect you. Okay, and has affected you, like your culture has affected you. All right, because you were in that surrounding, you were in that environment, and you are a product of your culture. Now, God wants you to be a product of heaven. He wants to put his stamp on you, made in heaven. All right. And that everything about it reflects his glory, his power, his anointing, and nothing is in it that's going to take away from that. So your very, your everything, your everything, your dwelling, your, your social capabilities, your spirituality, okay, is, and its effect on you is your milieu. And so everything around you, the Lord has said, will cause an effect, okay? It's cause and effect. Everything around you, everything in your environment has a cause and an effect on you. What do you want your cause and effect to be, all right? What do you really want it to be? Oh, bless the Lord. Do you want your cause and effect to be a cause and effect that's going to interrupt God's plan in your life in any way. Hmm. Wow. So, praise God. Let's ask God for the territorial assignment that he's given us. Let's ask God to allow us to look to him for everything and for everything that we're putting out and everything that's around us. Ask him. You know, piece by piece, is this for your glory? Is this going to promote you? I am nowhere near a minimalist, okay? Minimalist, you know, that's not me. <laughs> there are a lot of people that are minimalists, and I really like minimalists, and I like, I like the way they decorate things. I like the way they do things, and everything is at a minimal, where I am kind of like the other way. I'm like overflow, okay? But... <clears throat> Now God is calling us to be minimalists of, of, of a kind, okay, of a kind. We're, we're going to minimize, okay, we're going to minimize the stuff that's in our environment that doesn't reflect him. We're going to take it out. We're going to get rid of it. But on the other, other hand, you're going to be like me, which is a person who likes a lot of stuff around, praise God. And you're going to fill your space when you do do it with a lot of stuff that's holy, with a lot of stuff that reflects God. Remember, everything around you has cause and effect. And if it's not affecting God's glory, if it's not affecting God's presence you know, in you, then get rid of it. Remember the priest's clothes, even the threads that the, the, the garments were made with, uh, were, everything had to be made for show, for glory, okay? For beauty and everything that you are has been made for the glory of God and for the beauty of God and take everything away out of your surroundings that does not reflect that glory. So, and, and you're letting God know, Lord, this is a place where you can dwell, not only in me, but in all my surroundings, my entire milieu. I'm giving you permission, Lord, hallelujah, like I needed to, <laughs> but I'm giving you the honor 
okay, to have cause and effect in everything in my milieu, my entire environment, my entire habitat, okay, everywhere I go, everywhere I be, all right, you, Father, hallelujah, take authority and go yourself in the excellence that you have provided me. And I want to show forth that excellence as well, whether I say it or whether I, 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 I don't, okay, okay, please God. Are you providing a safe place for God to dwell in you and around you? There's an attitude that God wants to devoid you of, okay? It's a lax mentality about the world and, and sin therein. Oh, the world is out there doing it. I'm a Christian, so I can bring worldly stuff into my house. It's okay because I'm a Christian. I can look at this stuff. I can watch this stuff. I can read this stuff. I can do this stuff. All right, but even though the scripture says not to do it, but because you're a Christian, you believe you can do it. God is getting rid of all of that. That is not his environment. The angels in heaven don't do what they want to do. They do what God has created them to do. And you will too. Praise God. Uh, it's a lax mentality about the world and the sin they're in. And often uh, you'll fight for the right to be worldly. You know, oh, I got a right. You know, it's my right. Okay. As a, as a child of God. And often you'll fight for the right to be worldly and uphold your attitude. And what you are doing as your God-given right, I can do this because God has given me the right to do this. And it's sin. And God is saying, yeah, you got a choice whether you do it or not. But if you want to promote my glory, if you want to promote my excellence, okay, if you want to promote my presence, my milieu is to be your milieu. If you want that, then you're going to get rid of that stuff. You're going to stop doing that. You're going to stop. You're going to get that stuff out of your house and out of your place. And if you have an attachment to it, Hallelujah, it's an attachment oh, to something that is not of God. And an inordinate attachment is, is based on demonic oppression. And when you, when you just, it's in, your, it's in your flesh, all right? It's carnal, all right? God wants you to be devoid of carnality, all right? Oh, hallelujah. And there's this attitude that God wants to devoid in you, that because you're a Christian, you can still shake your booty. You can still, you know, cuss. You can still do a lot of the things that are unscriptural to, uh, to do. You can lie. You can cheat. You know, oh, God is with me. Mm -mm. God is saying, that's not the environment uh, where I want to dwell. And I want your en environment to be completely holy. All right. So you carry items that are not God-centered. You um, And you do and say things that are not God-centered. And when you do this, you have cre you've created a place for the enemy to rest his head in your life <laughs> for the enemy to take precedence over God. When you do this stuff and you know it's not right <laughs> and you do it anyway. And that attitude, well, I, I can do this, you know, it's okay. God sees, he knows my heart. God said, yes, I know exactly what's in your heart. Stop doing it. <laughs> Sin is in your heart. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. What is your milieu mindset, okay? Hmm. Is it okay to let a few of the enemy's ways in your space, like cussing and swearing and demon-centered movies, books and meetings and demon-centered stuff around you and uh, uncleanness, uh, what is it? lasciviousness and licentiousness, lying, and full of pride. God is not going to dwell there. Okay. So um, that is, is a word for you today. Praise God. And we're opening this up to uh, discussion. Uh, and, and Doris, if you are available, we'd like to hear from you. Did any of this uh, touch you today as far as your milieu is concerned, your surroundings? Anything that you can promote, anything that you can get rid of, anything that you can add you know, to your surroundings? Do you understand more fully now that your milieu is you and how everything around you affects you and how you affect it in the glory and excellence of God. Are you there? Take you off mute. No, she's on mute. Praise God. Okay. Bless the Lord. I see that. Uh, Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you so much, uh, Prophet Jeremiah. What I'd like for, to have you to do is just chime in uh, and, and share something. You said it's a good word. Praise God. You don't have to show your face if you don't want to. I know that you were out late last night in, in church and everything. And so 
but a milieu, your, your place uh, that you have provided for God in your mind, heart, and in your surroundings, your godly glory milieu. God, would you like to join us to say just a few words? And while we're waiting for you, we're going to have Apostle Jonathan. Thank you, Apostle Jonathan. Let's brag on J I'll just brag on Jeremiah for a second. Uh, you know, I, I, <laughs> I notice that he's carrying his Bible with him regularly. I, I, I see him with a, a Bible on his desk and, and looking at uh, the scriptures. I, I caught him kneeling the other day uh, next to his bed, obviously praying. You know, <laughs> uh, you know sometimes that's the, the telltale sign is, is w when you catch people off guard, what are they doing? You know, uh, <laughs> praise God. What's, what's really in their heart, <laughs> you know? And uh, like you say, this affects so many things, the things that we, that we watch, the things that we uh, listen to uh, where our, you know, where does our mind go? <laughs> uh, but then what are we surrounding ourselves with? Are, you know, one of the things that I learned is uh, in studying counseling, uh, there was a lady that came in and she said, this is going wrong and that's gone wrong. This has gone wrong and, well, you know, on and on and on. And she wanted things to get better. That's why she was there with the counselor. And the counselor said, I'll tell you, I'm going to give you an assignment this week. And <laughs> that's to, to straighten up the house. <laughs> and it was like, how did you know my house was a mess? <laughs> <laughs> it's because you've told me you're dwelling on everything else. And if you can have success in one area, then you can have success in another area. And if you'll just start with, with straightening up the house, start with, you know, whatever it was, laundry or, or whatever uh, that was out of place, um, you'll feel better about yourself. And then you can, then we can go on to some things that are uh, more psychological and more spiritual and things like that. But if you'll make a commitment to straighten up, <laughs> uh, uh, then uh, we'll, we'll, things will look a lot better. And uh, it's amazing how effective that is because we get to the place where we, you know, heaven forbid that people want to give up, you know, and there are people every day they're committing suicide because they've given up and, God forbid that's that's the last place to go. It's not a place ever to go. Uh, but God wants us to, round, if we'll surround ourselves with the good things, it'll make such a difference. I, I remember a testimony of a man who's now a great preacher, uh, really profound. But in his younger years, he was like, I, you know, I just don't get this whole religious stuff. And uh, he, he made a deal with God, if you will. And uh, he said, for the next two weeks, I am going to do everything I know uh, that is the right thing to do. I, I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to pray. I'm going to not listen to the music I've been listening to. Uh, I'm going to do everything I know that's right and not do the crazy things, you know. And uh, I want to know that God is real. And after that time period, and I don't remember whether it was two weeks or two months, but so I think he gave him two months. But anyway, at the end of that experience, two things happened. One, he, uh, he realized the way he'd been living uh, didn't make sense, and this clean living really did. you know. But he said, but that's not enough. I need to know that God's real. That was my real question. And that night, God spoke to his heart in a way that he knew that he knew that he knew that God was real. Mm. Amen. And, and it changed his life forever. Hallelujah. And then, of course, he continued on living a, a righteous path. But it was, it was, for him, it was a start of doing what he knew to do. And uh, seeing the, how much more sense it made, how, how, how the, the plans and the ways of God were so much more uh, healthy and fulfilling uh, than the ways that he'd been living. Praise God. So I just want to encourage everybody, you, we got to do what we know to do. A lot of us, <laughs> you know, a lot of us preachers, we want to explain to you this and that and the other thing, but it, it's like, you already know what you should get rid of. You already know what's, what, 
you shouldn't be doing. How about turning on the righteousness now? Amen. I see Amen. Jeremiah Praise is with us. So Jeremiah is there. Hold on one second, Jeremiah. I want to introduce you. I want to say some things about you before you speak. I'm going to talk about your boy. I'm going to talk about my boy here. Praise God. <laughs> Bless the Lord. And so as I introduce uh, Jeremiah to you, you, you know, Jeremiah, Prophet Jeremiah, my son. Uh, when, when, before he was born, I created a, a spiritual milieu for him in my surroundings and carrying this child and praying for him, having prophets prophesy over him while he was, you know, it wasn't born yet in my, in my stomach. And uh, some notable prophets prophesied over him. I kept a milieu uh, of uh, surrounding him and teaching him the scriptures. And as a baby, uh, when he slept, he listened to scriptures. He listens to scriptures that are recorded in my voice. He listened to Benny Hinn music. He listened to Benny Hinn. Uh, and um, this is overnight, you know, as a baby in his crib. And this was, you know, like every night. And so he was taught the scriptures. He was taught the word. And as much as I possibly could, I created a, a glory, godly milieu environment for him uh, and by example and, and by design. So it was a specific design of God uh, for him. And so, and I kept that, uh, that design with him. And now, you know, you see him, he's here with us. He's, uh, you know, uh, going to be out on his own again pretty soon. But before he does that, we see his living style. We see the style of his living and he promotes God in, in everything that he does in the house. He, and he plays godly music 24 seven in his room low, no matter what he's doing, that music is on. Uh, he's listening to scriptures. He's listening to podcasts. He, he is equipping himself and it's a 24 seven thing. Even while he's sleeping, scriptures in the word of God is playing. And I'm telling you this godly milieu that he has created this godly habitat, this, this godly surrounding is promoting God's presence and his glory in, Jer in Jeremiah. So with all of that said, there's a whole lot more I can say, but you know, you guys are going to think I'm bragging because he's my son, but this is not a brag. It's a matter of fact, this is his lifestyle. I've seen it, you know, and I can testify to his lifestyle. So in Jesus name, I present to you, prophet Jeremiah, my baby boy. Amen. You guys hear me? Yep, we got gotcha. you. Amen. Sorry, I'm still recovering from like the long day I had yesterday, but um, do you have your buds on? Or are you off? Are they off? I'm or? off my I'm off my buds. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we're gonna have Perfect. you at some point turn your streamyard uh, mic up because your voice is softer than everybody else. Wait, I'm actually I'm I'm literally like talking directly into the mic. Can you guys hear okay. me now? All right. All right. Well, for the most part, I um. The only thing that the Lord was giving me was last night, the Lord was reminding me sort of like my position, right? Because, you know, I, I took a risk last year The you know, I, I, the Lord had me give up everything that I thought I knew and all the stuff I cultivated back in the East coast. And the Lord told me to come back out here to Arizona. And at the time I, I was ready to do it because I, I knew God had some other things for me. And God had done such a work in me during that time where it was almost like I was ready for change. And, you know, growing up, I didn't like it because it was almost like change to me meant that everything that I got comfortable in, I had to give up. Well, the Lord was doing a whole bunch of stuff in me between 2021 and 2022 to the point where it was almost like I didn't want to be comfortable anymore. Right. I didn't really care about comfort in, in the terms of you know, but not necessarily liking change. So I was able to, to like, I was able to embrace change and the Lord told me to move all the way back to the other side of the country. I used to live out here in Arizona. For those of you who might not know, I think I have been lived in Arizona since 2015. And the Lord told me to come back and I was ready for that change because the Lord was, you know, was, he did a lot of stuff in me for me to like change, right? And then last night, because of just some challenges I've been facing job wise for the last like three months, the Lord had to remind me of what he was doing in my life and the milieu that he created. And I was at uh, a discipleship class last night with her. And one of the guys was actually one of the worship leaders. I was having a conversation with him after the, um, after our, 
that time. He just kind of just softly reminded me um, without even really knowing that he was reminding me of what God was having me do. Because even though I didn't have a lot of things in the natural, I mean, I've given up a lot of things and to come out here, I've been having, you know, different uh, challenges, not spiritually, but just with, uh, in the natural, just, you know, with working and it's been a while when it comes down to the jobs I've had here in Arizona. The Lord had me of what I was doing in the milieu that he's created around me here as a result of me, not necessarily at this particular point in time, having like which is what I would call a tradition. Last night, a woman came in who was having some real issues. Um, she had just lost a person to that she knew to suicide. And uh, she lived across the street from where we were having the discipleship. And some of our friends uh, came, um, and well, they invited her to come over just for prayer. And some of the ladies, including um, our very own prophet Renee, prayed over this, this woman. And I'm over here just watching, and the, I, I begin to weep. Now, I'm typically not a crier. Um, <laughs> Normally, I'm not anyway, but <laughs> I started to weep. And I, I sat there, and while I was standing, I was walking and praying while the ladies were praying over this woman who she had just given her life to the Lord. She had just made a confession for Jesus. And, you know, she she's never really been, she's gone to church a few times in her life, but has never been what she called a, a religious person, right? I was watching God change a life in real time. And the, what, the reason why it blessed me so much is God was reminding me about the milieu that he's created around me in this time point in my life, moving me here to Arizona. I've seen God change lives through Jericho Way Ministries when we've had our great impact, uh, deliverance impact meetings. And now I'm seeing God change lives almost every day. And to be honest, because when I was living out in Massachusetts, I threw all of my time and my effort into my work and what I was doing in my career. I didn't have time a lot, of, you know, a lot of times for ministry to do ministry things. I did a lot of stuff for Jericho Way. Like I, I made sure that I made time, even if I had to be on the, you know, on the broadcast while I was at work or something, right? But what was so like powerful was the Lord was reminding me with all the challenges in the natural that I'm facing, I'm actually watching God change lives every day, most days anyway. And that's amazing to me. Like the Lord had to, even recently within the last, I mean, I was kind of feeling challenged this week. The Lord actually had to like remind me of all the things that I'm seeing now happen as a result of me not having my time taken away doing the natural things and see the lord says that will come eventually right that will all that you know like having a job being all that stuff because that will definitely come eventually i felt the lord speaking to my heart last night but he's allowed me to have a moment in time where i'm not necessarily bogged down with you know the workaday world so i could actually see god do things and he created a whole uh, community of people around me i i have i've had mom and i have mom and apostle jonathan i have prophet renee and now i have a whole church family who is willing to pray for me and be there for me i had during my conversation with the one of the worship leaders at our church after uh the discipleship he said yeah i've been jeremy i've been praying for you every day and i just didn't know what to pray for you but now like i have an idea of what to pray for you and it just it was so nice to have that community of people say that they were praying for me and thinking of me. And I know that my parents have always done that. I know that Prophet Renee and other people have done that. But it was just very surreal of me to have other, you know, these other people say that they were praying for me every day. And that is what changed I, I would say the challenge, like the me feeling challenged this week with not having a job and all this other stuff and feeling kind of not I, I wouldn't say down about it. I, I said I told the Lord I would never be depressed another day in my life. That's not the depression will never have any hold over me. If I could use a term, the term I would use is I felt challenged this week, right? Up some dogs out there. 
I felt challenged this week. I didn't feel down about it, but the Lord used the situation last night to sort of deliver me from that sort of, that challenge I was feeling and allow the Lord, and then no, the Lord was, he, he reminded me of what is actually happening in my life and what God is actually doing and the milieu that he created around me at this season of my life. And I'm so Amen. grateful for it. Amen. And I know that my uh, prophet Tina was talking about this today, like in, in just your, who you are, the community that's been created around you, your milieu. I am really, really blessed to have the people in my life that I have now. And I'm so happy that the Lord had to sort of knock me off of my high horse in order for me to get here. Because I'm going to tell you, once I get, you know, a, a position, I put my all into that position as far as like my natural career, work, you know, my work ethic is concerned. I put my all into that position. I don't miss a day of work. Um, the only time when I was in Massachusetts that I ever missed a day of work is when the weather did not permit me to get there. And at the time, I drove a really small car. And so if it would snow outside, like my car, especially, you know, working and living out in the boonies, I wasn't going anywhere. But <laughs> that was the only thing that made me miss work. I put my all into a position but the Lord had to knock me off of my high horse so I could actually have the time to to do what the Lord has called me to do. Even this Sunday, we have, um, you know, we get to minister to somebody over StreamYard, which I'm so happy about. And uh, we, we, we get to minister. I have time to minister to people. And this is what I'm really grateful for. I know God is going to bring all of that other stuff, the natural stuff. I know he's going to, you know, he's going to, um, you know, give me a job. And I, there's a lot of different things I know he's going to do in the future. And I mean, I'm confident of that. Um, but I feel like I'm, 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 I'm in the place where the Lord wants me to be. And I'm really grateful of the milieu that God has created around me in this season. And I want to encourage people who are listening that if you feel um, that God has not, well, I'll put it this way, you feel like you're in a season of life where you just, it feels like things aren't moving and you're in a really weird place and you had to give up a lot of stuff for God. Uh, when you've given up things for God and you're in the place that God wants you to be, he's going to create and surround you with the right people <laughs> that are going to pray you into your destiny. He's going, to, Amen. He's, going to, he's going to give you a milieu that's going to literally pray you right into your destiny, pray you into what God has called you to do. And uh, I'm going to tell you, like, don't think carnally. Don't think finitely. You see, we have the infinite Holy Spirit in us. So we don't have to get down about our situation, or our current situation. Because if we're down about our current situation, then we don't really know our God and we don't really know what's up, even though God has given us an opportunity to know what's going on. So I want to say trust God, allow him to surround you with the people he needs to surround you with and watch God in this time blow you out into your destiny, push you out and launch you out. The Lord has you humbled right now. You're not you know, like probably feel like you're doing what, you know, like you're probably feel like, oh gosh, you know, why am I this age and dealing with all this stuff now? It's because God is uh, allowing you to, to come to a place where you can handle the stuff that he's going to give you later. Yeah, he's going to surround you with the right people, with the right community, with the right milieu. So you can actually be equipped to do the things that he's called to do. I feel more equipped now that I have Jericho Way and Living Word behind me doing what I, uh, helping me uh, fulfill the destiny that God has placed on my life. If I was out there working and doing all that other stuff and putting all of my effort and time into just that, I would not have the community that God has built up with me for the last like four or five months. And I am, and even ever since I've been out here in Arizona, and I am just so happy to have all of this backup. So just allow the Lord to show you what's really going on and he will tell you what's really going on and trust the Lord. Um, just allow him to, to work in your life. Trust him. Trust him. Proverbs 4. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not unto your own understanding. And he will direct your paths. Allow the Lord to work in your life in this area. And he'll show you um, great and mighty things in this season. Amen and amen. God bless amen. you guys. Amen. Did you want to comment on Meredith's comment or was somebody else putting that up? Was that Jonathan putting that up? Did you want to make oh, a comment? Oh, wait, was on that? Did he put it up? I didn't okay. even see it. 
Okay, I, I see it now. Okay, this message. So let well, um, this is what she's saying. Say, read that first, okay, and then we'll go into the other one, and we'll. This all is all news to me. Thanks for teaching, Miss. This message wow. um, countered the wrong religious teaching that you try to be holy in your own estimation, but you can seek God and be obedient to Him so that He is glorified in everything. Glory. Awesome. No, true. No, and I, what, what I would say is like this is like. You know what, what what Prophet Tina taught today and what I'm talking about, it's like these are things, you know, we're using like a word that most people don't you know use today. <laughs> Who and uses it? I don't know anybody that and I, actually I heard you say it. I heard your voice say it. You heard my I, voice say it. Did you yeah. say milieu? I actually learned this it. word, believe it or not, I learned the word milieu from the show Frasier. Oh really? Oh okay. Yes. I I remember he used uh Frasier Crane, the um you know that that old sick from, the early, from the early from the early 2000s kind of a, and 90s. Kind of a highbrow word. <laughs> yes. But um I learned that word years ago from watching that show. But um this stuff is you know the, the word is is not used that often, but this is basically some basic, actually speaking of that word, stuff that God wants everybody to know about their community and who God has surrounded them with. As I as Prophet Tina was speaking, I was and even last night, I had this encounter with God where he was just reminding me why I'm not in the position I think I should be and what he was doing while I was in the position I think I shouldn't have been in. But I was in the obedience of God. I was walking and doing what God has called me to do. And he called me to come out here. He called me to, you know, to give up what I thought I knew back on the East Coast. So I'm so happy. Meredith, that God is like uh, is teaching you something through this because I know that this is what the Lord is doing is bringing us from glory to glory in understanding as we have the Holy Spirit and you're absolutely right. You can't be holy in your own estimation. This is why you know when we talk about things on holy life, the 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 bet the Lord was actually just talking to me about this even t this morning, and she can't um, do anything for God or get anywhere with God. Um, until you come to the end of yourself, until you mm -hmm. know that it is God that is working through you. I mean, I was watching a podcast with Dr. Jordan Peterson and a whole bunch of other very educated men sitting down at a round table, right? And they were talking about demons, believe it or not. Um, yeah, he talks about the giants coming too. He talks about a lot of that stuff. Jordan yeah, Peterson I know, stuff, but the thing no is, joke. Mm -hmm. It was interesting is that during this podcast, all these people were, you know, very educated people trying to sort of understand demons and, and principalities and all this stuff. And they even had the, the the Jewish guy, Dennis Prager there, who was trying to figure out everything else, you know, figuring this out from a Jewish perspective. And the Lord just kept on saying to me, he just whispered to my heart, he said, you can't really get anywhere with me. You might get somewhere with this world, but you can't get anywhere with me until you come to the end of yourself and until you can be like, Galatians 2.20, no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me, where you can come to the end of your intellect, the end of your understanding, the end of your own wisdom, and you start embracing God. It's the same reason why God said that, um, it's that he uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. It's the reason why Jesus came in a manger and not a palace. There's a reason why, you know, he rode on a donkey and not a white horse. He will be riding. He, he will be living. He does live in a palace. We will be living in the New Jerusalem. And he will come back on a white horse. Well, there's a reason why he came the way he did, because it was the way specifically to confound the wise Jews of the time. And it's still confounding the wise today. And so you can't do it by your own estimation. And that's why, uh, you know, I'm just so happy that Meredith, God has been blessing you through our ministry and, and teaching you some things. Because um, I'm learning. As I'm learning, I'm just so happy that God's given me the opportunity to teach it. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that. Uh, praise God. Anybody else? Let's see. Um, and I think that's it for right now for that that type of comment. But what I want to do is just give you a recap of, of milieu, okay? And we want this to be a word that we, not that we have coined or made up, but uh, for you to understand God's all-encompassing uh, glory and anointing that he's given you in your whole world. Your milieu is your world. What are you putting in your world? The scripture tells us that bad company corrupts good morals. 
any kind of bad company on your walls, on your TV, on your phone, <laughs> anywhere, you know, uh, that you are. If you're in bad company, it can corrupt your good morals. And so, and, and now God is telling us it's going to keep him out of that situation to the degree that he wants to be in it, in the fullness of where he wants to be. So, Mill, you as your environment, uh, it's the circumstances and the conditions or objects by which one is surrounded. You're, the circumstances and places, people and things that you surround yourself with, where you go, what you do, how you do it. You know, somebody's house, you know, you're not supposed to be in, you know, especially you, you, you men that are still going to the, to the, you know, to the, <laughs> to, let's put it this way. You're going to um, to Las Vegas, but you're not going there, you know, to go to church. <laughs> you're not going there to go to Circus Circus. <laughs> you're going there for the kind of houses that they have there and the gambling that's there. All right. Your circumstances. Is it an environment? Is your milieu that you're creating there? Is it the milieu of the glory of God to promote the glory of God, to promote the excellence? Is it for beauty? Is it to show the beauty of God? And if you are, that's cool. That's good. You know, so your conditions, you know, conditions, you know, your living conditions, your surroundings, your job conditions, your condition in the neighborhood, you know, um, your condition on YouTube. What are your conditions? You know, what 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 have you put out there as far as the way you walk, the way you talk? OK, the way you present and the objects, listen to this, it's your objects to any of the objects around you. Are they promoting the glory of heaven? You know, are they promoting the excellence of the name of God? Hallelujah. And so here are some synonyms and similar words. And, you know, capture these, okay? Your background, which was your background milieu, had a lot to do with who, how you're made, you know, check your background out with, with God's glory and his word, because even though he put you there and he calls you to be birthed there, not everything in your background, even though you may worship it, so to speak, oh, this is my background. This is where I came from. This is what blah, 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 blah. You know, we did it this way. We said it this way. We wore it this way. You know, it may not be promoting the glory and, and, and uh, of God for show and beauty. Okay, your background, your position uh, is your milieu as well, your position in life, your position in church, your position on your job, you know, positionally, uh, do, does your position that you have, uh, does it bring glory to God or does it dishonor God in any way? Your status is your milieu as well. Are you using the status that you have in the natural that, that, that God has given you in the natural realm, whatever your status is? Is that status you have, does it bespeak glory? Does it bespeak, you know, heaven, you know, heaven on earth in, in, in this uh, status that you have? Oh, wow, your habitat. Habitat is so important. And so habitat is not just, you know, um, your house. Your habitat is everywhere your living, breathing body goes. Okay, that is your habitat. Uh, are you reflecting God's glory? Oh, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. One moment. Lost my page here. Okay. Your location, your place, your contexture, your surroundings, your setting, your terrain, and your territory. This is all milieu. The climate in which you promote. What is the climate, the level of, of life, of the life force that comes from you? the temperature of your life force, wherever you are and in your surroundings, okay? Your environment, okay, and your atmosphere. What atmosphere are you creating, okay? Is it a, an atmosphere that you're creating where God can come and rest and, and just dwell with you? Praise God. But if not, the Lord is saying in any of these areas, if you found lacking, hmm, the word of God is telling you this stuff is corrupting you. It is corrupting you no matter, no matter how innocent it seems. It's corruption. All right. And it's corruption in the sense that uh, God wants to magnify himself in your existence. And you've got a few cracks in there that won't allow that magnification to come forth in the total, complete way that God wants it. What is your milieu? We're talking today about how to navigate your surroundings, how to navigate your environment, how to navigate <laughs> your conditions how to navigate the objects that are surrounding you and your circumstances to always bespeak 
total glory of God, hallelujah, and excellence, okay, and beauty. You've been made for his beauty, okay? Uh, you are, he is a beautiful God and you are a beautiful creation. And he wants the beauty of you, him in you, to shine forth in, every, in your milieu, okay? In your, um, um, your metron of authority that he's given you, in the place, in the surroundings, in the circle of life that he's given you. He wants to be in every phase of it. And he wants to kick out everything that doesn't reflect him as it is in heaven. In the holy, righteous name of Jesus, I'm Prophet Tina. Thank all of you for joining us today. This is definitely some words for thought, isn't it? Praise God. Hallelujah. And so um, let us know, you know, uh, if you've received anything uh, from this and if you can see uh, this vision and, and see this revelation as something that you can attain to, something that you can put in you, you know, for Ushadabakandarabasata, for the glory of God and for his presence. In the name of Jesus, praise God. So this has been The Red Door. And I'm Prophet Tina and welcome, always welcome to come in and find rest, find peace for your weary soul, praise God. Jesus is here. He's here with us. He designed this word. It's, this is a designer word for you today. Didn't come from me. It came quite surprisingly from the throne of grace. But again, we obey God, don't we? Be mindful of your milieu. Be mindful of your surroundings. Be mindful of your conditions. Be, be mindful of your habitat and everywhere you go. Praise God. You are reflection of the glory of God. Pull everything out of you, on you, and around you, and even people that may be in your life. That may not be reflecting uh, God's glory to the, his degree, you know, and now walk, walk circumspectly. And what that means is to walk very sure-footed, that every step that you take is in God's glory, in his pleasure, and in his plan. And anything along the way, that doesn't reflect, reflect his glory, his pleasure, and his plan, that you're to move it out of the way. That's how you navigate your milieu. That's how you navigate your environment. You are going to do spring cleaning this year, not only in the natural, but you're going to be doing spring cleaning in the spirit realm. What's in your heart, your mind, what's on your soul. That is not giving God the glory. You're going to remove that and you're going to put in that which is his signature, that which is his plan, that which is his glory, so that he can move in this realm, in you and in your realm, as freely, as freely as he moves in the heavenly realm. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that an awesome place to be in? So this is the red door. And I'm Prophet Tina, and thank you again for being with us. There's more to this word. There's more to this story. There's more to your story. Praise God, and we'll be hearing it soon. Bless the Lord.